hi and thank you so much for joining me today and in today's process video I wanted to use one of Amelia's cut files that's Amelia Creates on Hey Look a Magpie um, this is the hexagon background strip and I'm using it as a mask to um, ink through using my Distress Oxides I wanted to use the Heidi Swap Sun Chaser range which I've been keeping my eye on in the shop for a little while and decided that it was finally time to treat myself to some. Um, we've actually just been out to the Lake District for the day today. It's only about an hour and a half, two hours away from us. And uh, it was a wonderful day and I had a lovely photo with Amelia when we stopped for some coffee in the afternoon. So I thought I would scrap that. So I chose some Distress Oxide colours that would match nicely with the Sun Chaser and I've started with the Distress Oxide in Fossilised Amber and this is a lovely golden yellow that goes really nicely with the papers. So you can see I'm just colouring in some of the hexagons there. And then I'm going to go in with the dried marigold, which is a pale pale orange <clears throat> and blends really nicely with this fossilised amber. And again, works well with these papers. So going over the edges a bit just to give the definition of all the hexagons on this strip. And um, you'll see me slowly building up the colours with the different colours that I've got there to the left. So now going in with the speckled egg and you can see I've started to blend over the colours over each of the hexagons rather than just using one colour. I didn't want it to be too blocky, I wanted them to blend into one another. So I shall keep working and blending. Then to introduce some of the pink that's in the papers, so I'm going in with saltwater taffy using a light hand at first because I didn't want it to be too bright and this can be quite an intense colour if you really build it up. And next I'm going to use Iced Spruce. This is a much darker colour, um, but a really nice grey green. And it just gives a lovely contrast and brings the colours down a little bit. And now I'm happy with that, I'm just removing the mask and having a look and I'll check what it looks like with the photo and I realise of course the photo covers an awful lot of it up. Um, so I want to add a bit more in this top right hand corner so just moving that mask and then I'll start again. 
and I'll focus more on the um, blues and yellows on this one so starting with the speckled egg because I have the blue dauber on there. And then moving on to antique linen, which is a little bit paler and more muted than the fossilised amber, which can be quite intense, as you see on the left hand side there. adding in a bit of salvage patina just to bring some brightness back to that corner. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm really happy with how that's filling the page out and it's added a lot more definition around the photo. So then I look at the mask, the stencil, and realise that it would look lovely on the layout to give a contrast because of all those colours that it's picked up while we've been doing the blending. So just having the final decision where the photo is going to go. And I wanted to trim it down a bit so it's a little bit more square. And just to make sure that we're the central focal point. So I've trimmed a bit too much off my side, so a bit more of Amelia there. And I'm much happy with the balance of that photo. I think it was just wasted space. So coming in with this stencil, or cut file, <laughs> I've used as a stencil, and I'm just going to glue with my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive around the edges and get that stuck down. And then I'll trim off the excess once it's stuck down. I've trimmed that little bit I'm trimming off the excess at the back it's much easier to get a flush finish if you trim from the back and then I'm wondering what to do with this last piece here I'll <coughs> end up cutting the bottom hexagon off and then just adhering a small piece to that It's time to decide what sort of a mat I want on this photo and this time I am going to go in with a solid white mat. I know I want to use a lot of the ephemera pack around the photo to build up my layering so um, a white mat will just give a little bit of separation between the photo and all the colours that are coming in. So using my double sided tape to stick that down. ephemera bits and it's just trial and error I'm just looking at all the different bits that could work I pick up this frame but quickly discard it because I've got the hexagons and I don't really want to go in with frames once I've got hexagons on the layout I'm picking out these word bits which I love this ephemera pack is amazing I think there's a tiger in there which I wouldn't use but apart from that I think I pretty much use everything in it 
and just spreading everything around. Quite often when you start to pull things out, you start to formulate an idea. So just picking up anything that I might want to use on here. And moving it around the page. And it's as I start to create a strip down the right hand side, I realise that I want all of these down the left because the holes on the tags are on the left hand side. So moving everything out of the way and starting to build this strip of words and tags. And then keep working my way through. So it's definitely a process. And some bits that you really have your heart set on doing make the cut in the end, but it's fun messing. I really like that on the agenda piece because I want to put my journaling there just about where we were and what we were doing. And keep flipping through. And then this lemon, I quite like the look of. So just keep checking and looking through. So I'll leave you to watch my process for this. Once I'm happy with the ephemera pieces I've chosen, I start looking at what else I've got. So I start by picking up the offcuts of papers that I have just to see if I can create a little bit of a shelf at the bottom of the photo. And I wanted to bring that back in, black in, to bring a darker colour in because it's all very pale at the moment. And I love this piece, so I'll just fishtail the end. And that will definitely go underneath. I'm just having a look and a think and then bring the black piece back in and decide that if I just tear the end and use a strip at first it goes under eventually it actually goes above the fishtail piece <clears throat> but for now it just sits there and then I start looking through the sticker book to see what's in here and what could be used and I pause here because I'm thinking about using one of these labels and that makes me think I probably need to start th sticking things down because once I put stickers on I'm not going to move them about and I really want to stick them down rather than that in the Monte card or using powder to take the sticky off. And when I see these words I think yeah definitely time to stick down because I want to blend some of those in with that strip on the left hand side. So this is a new product to the shop it's the foam tabs from Stix2. They're absolutely amazing 25 millimeter squares it's a great alternative to using the um, funky foam and I just use nine of those to map the photo. I start off with six but realise that I want some in the middle as well just so it doesn't bow. aggressive pulling the uh, backs off the foam because I've pulled some of the adhesive off so I'm taking the opportunity to use my tea ruler to make sure that my photo's straight and then I'll just go in with a little bit of liquid glue to stick it down properly so moving everything out of the way I do in a minute <laughs> go in with some there we go liquid glue and stick it down and then I've just got some time to quickly slip that on the agenda through. And this tag, I realise that a lot of it's going to be lost behind the photo, so I'll just snip the other bit off to use another time. And then I just start going round and sticking everything down. And 
just making sure that I don't cover the words on that lemon, it's a you sweet thing. Um, and then I'm having a bit of a fiddle because I'm having to think exactly where I want things to go. So just checking the positioning before I start on that left hand strip of words. Because I want, like I said before, I want to incorporate some of those stickers from the sticker book in there. So just checking that I'm happy with the positioning of everything before we go in with those. And I struggle at first to get it off. I haven't realised that these are transparent or semi-transparent stickers. So once I've sussed that, it's much easier to get them off the sheet. I'm going to stick that down and then realise that I should probably adhere the tag down as well because I forget and then it falls off. <laughs> I get annoyed. So I think I'll stick that and then realise. Yeah, there we go. So I start sticking them down and I get a little bit further down and realise that actually I want to give some dimension and add some foam to them. another word here yeah, and then I put happiness there and then realize that the tab below the word the enjoy now phrase says happiness so I'm trying to work out where else to put that and think oh it could go on the top and this is the point where I think actually I could add some foam behind that so that the top of it is raised with foam but the bottom sticks underneath that love this tag so just going in with some foam that I had spare. I think you probably saw it before. It's stuck to the bottom of my Nouveau adhesive glue. Because I pulled it off the backing and then thrown the backing away. So I just stuck it there until I could use it again. So then I pulled this Sunshine Vibes up to put some foam on that. And then just curling the ends of those tails of those letters on Enjoy now so that I can get the good times tab under, tag underneath and then I come in with that cut off piece from the tag at the top and it just fits perfectly there just to fill in the gaps really all the way around the photo although it's not white space because I've inked it I still wasn't happy just having it plain so again with those foam tabs and I start just with one but as I mess about, you'll see me later on, I realise that it's not quite enough, it's not high enough, so I'll add another one in a bit. Now looking at these puffy word phrases, I love these so much, and I want to use that life is good, so I'm just going to cut it out so that I can position it before sticking it down, and take the opportunity to use the hearts that are around it as well. I don't use that in joy, because um, I feel there are enough words <laughs> on this layout at this point. Just getting the positioning. Deciding whether I do want those strips underneath or not, but I do. I think they add something. I'm fiddling. Just taking some thinking time as well. And then realise, like I said before, that I want that black strip right underneath the photo to bring some of the darker colour in. And here's where I see that I need another foam pad on there. So just adding another one. And then I'll use some wet glue to stick that down and the uh, heart actually onto the photo as well. And that sits much better. That heart just catches my eye while I'm sticking things down. So I'll put the heart sticker and then use add the puffy stickers. And then stick these strips down. Again, sometimes I'll do those little fiddly bits just to give myself a bit of thinking time while I'm working on a layout. So I just wanted to make absolutely sure that I was happy with those two strips under the photo. And now going in with the title. And you'll see I keep referring back to the acetate that it's stuck onto to work out the positioning of the different words because you'll see the is is quite a bit higher than the word life and good.
So once those puffy bits are stuck, I'm going to go in with my journaling. I won't make you sit through me writing all the journaling. It's long enough as it is, this video, watching me doing all the ink blending. But it's just a little note about where we were and why we were there. And still playing with that enjoy word, but I know that it's not right to go on there. So I'm going to look to see if there are any other puffies to add. And just settle with one in the end. And then looking at these definition stickers, um, I just wanted to add something to that fishtail piece underneath the photo. And I'm happy with that. So now I need to put my date. So rather than using black ink, I've decided to use two of the colours of the Distress Oxides and just um, overlap them onto a tab of white cardstock and then I'll work out exactly where I'm going to stick that after. So this is why I keep all my offcuts. They're just on my desk in a little caddy handy so that I can map photos or do these date strips or practice my writing if it needs to fit in a certain space. So I'm happy with it there and I want to put it up on foam just so that it stands out a bit because they're quite pale colours. Although they're bright, they don't stand out as much as black would. So just adding that there. And then I went away and chose some embroidery threads to tie through the tags. And uh, I've got quite a stash because I am a cross stitcher as well. And I do all crafts. <laughs> so I have quite a stash of quite a few different things around the house and then here I decide that I want to tie this in a bow and it really doesn't work very well I just I struggle with bows with six stranded embroidery thread it seems to go everywhere and I try to make it neat so I leave it alone once I've done it but then I come back and pull it out and just leave it as a loose piece of string So just fiddling that with that last tag and then I'll go around and trim off the tails because I don't want these to dominate the layout. I just wanted them to add a little bit of something to those tags to make it clear that they're tags really. So trim those off. Realise I'm not happy with that bow and I'm not going to mess with it. Just trim it. So just having another look and um, decide that I want to define the hexagons a bit more so I'm just going around with sketch lines around and I do all of the hexagons that you can see on the layout.
absolutely love how that really gives definition to those now and makes the colours pop a little bit more rather than just blending in together. Um, so one final thing, once that's done, I'll come in with my water bottle and just spray some water over the oxide inks um, and then I dab those up with a tissue. You'll see in the final picture, images and it really um, gives a good effect. They re the water reacts with the oxides in the ink, it's lovely. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry it was such a long video, but I re didn't really want to cut any of the ink blending out, just to show how I started with solid colours and then started blending them all together. So I'll leave you, leave you with these um, close-ups and I hope you'll join me again in my next video. Thank you. Bye.